Hey folks, welcome to the channel and another GPU review video. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the GTS 450. This is the GPU that I used in my recent £50 PC challenge. And coupled with the old Q6600 and 6GB of DDR2 RAM, the performance was... it was passable. But what about when it's coupled with a much newer PC? The PC we're going to be benchmarking on is it's indicative of a lower end gaming rig. It features an Intel Core i5 4590 quad core CPU, a gigabyte B85 motherboard and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory running Windows 7. The variant that we're using is the ASUS DirectCU Top Edition and we're running the core clock at 910 MHz. We've boosted the shader clock slightly up to 1850 and we've kept the memory clock at stock 1 GHz. Now it comes with 1 GB of GDDR5 memory on a 128 bit memory bus. So the specs are absolutely nothing outstanding. I mean, this card, it only cost me £15. It's small, it runs cool, and it only requires a 6-pin PCIe power connector. So this thing could be an option for somebody who's just looking to get something a little bit better than their integrated graphics or as a short-term stopgap. But what can it actually do? Is there any hope for a card that even NVIDIA deemed too slow for that GTX branding? Well, let's find out. To measure the frame rates, we've used fraps and I'll be attempting to record everything on the GTS 450 so if you see a few dips in the gameplay footage you'll know why because when you're recording on especially an older card it does tend to gobble up a few FPS. I've decided to start off the benchmarks today by running two synthetic but in-game benchmarks coming from Metro Last Light Redux and Tomb Raider 2013. First up we've got Metro and the settings we've settled on is 1600 by 900 on the medium preset with SSAA off, 4 times anisotropic filtering, and most of the other fancy effects off as well. Using this sub HD resolution, it netted us an average frame rate of 50 FPS, which is pretty good for a card of this age and spec. Moving on to Tomb Raider 2013, we're running it at 1080p on the high preset, and this includes things like FXAA and 8 times anisotropic filtering. The benchmark was run multiple times in an average taken, and that average was 40 FPS. Next up we've got Skyrim SE. Now this game is still so popular that quite a lot of questions I get on this channel is people asking me if certain GPUs are going to run it. So it's back in the benchmarks. In Skyrim SE, the GTS 450 manages to return an average FPS of 33. This is at 1080p, but it's on the low preset, details scaled up to medium, and God Race turned from all to low. Should be noted though that if you want a little bit more, dropping the resolution down to 900 or 720p allows you to turn on some nicer effects while still maintaining a frame rate that's well above 30 FPS. And even at these low settings, the game is still as immersive as ever. And even on low-end hardware like this, it still manages to get its hooks into you. Next up we've got Crisis 3, which I've covered in much more detail in the video in the corner. All I'll say is that to average 34 FPS were really reasonable settings and even at these low settings, the game still looks fantastic. Battlefield 1 up next, now this is a bit of a behemoth of a game, especially for older GPUs, and the GTS 450 it initially struggles a little. Texture pop-in is really prevalent during the first 20 seconds or so of loading into a level, but once it gets going, we averaged out a frame rate of 36 FPS, although dips below 30 were still fairly frequent, so if you're planning on getting into competitive multiplayer for example, you're going to need something with a lot more grunt than the GTS 450. For the single player campaign though, you can play through it all, and it's still quite enjoyable at 30 FPS. The fact that I would recommend a higher spec GPU for this game it shouldn't really come as much of a surprise considering that the minimum specifications calls out a 2GB GTX 660 as its minimum. Last up we've got GTA 5 and this was probably the most surprising result for me. Setting the resolution to 900p and setting everything on the normal settings returned 68 FPS on average. Yep, not 38, 68. I was surprised, but perhaps it's not that much of a surprise when you think about it. GTA 5 first came out very nicely optimised on the Xbox 360 and PS3, and they essentially run GPUs equivalent to something like a X1900 or a 7900 GT. And the GTS 450, despite being a very cheap card in its release, it's still considerably more powerful than either of those GPUs. Something else that helped us get this high frame rate is actually the 1GB buffer of VRAM. 
it was entirely filled running the game at 900p under normal settings. And that kind of means that the GTS 450 is limited to how high you can push the settings. The GPU itself can obviously handle much higher settings, but in this instance, it's the memory limitations that's holding things back, which means we're running at settings that are much lower than the GPU is actually capable of. With that said though, GTA 5 on normal, it still looks really good, and 60 plus FPS frame rate, it plays really well. So should you buy one? Well, that's a big question, it really depends solely on the buyer, and your location, how much you can get it for. The HD 5850 that I tested a while back, it was a much better card, and it's a kind of similar price, but you know, as we all know, prices of GPUs fluctuate pretty radically down at this end of the market, and they seem to have leapt up over the last few weeks. So if you need something right now, and you're happy with what it's actually capable of, the GTS 450 is going to get you by. For older games, it's perfect. So if that's your thing, then you're absolutely sorted. For newer games, however, you're going to be limited. But really, at £15, can you realistically expect anything more than that? And on a final note, I've been really impressed with this ASUS Direct CU2 GTS 450. It's very well built, the cooler is excellent, and even at 7 years old, it still looks like brand new. But really folks, that's pretty much all I've got to say on this GPU for today. Thanks for joining me in this look back, and remember to leave a comment down below tell me what you think of this old budget card, and use those thumbs to tell me what you thought of the video. And if you've not done so already, you can consider hitting that subscribe button. So again, thanks folks for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.